Hey guys, welcome to another Mastermind tutorial video. Now today I'm starting things off a little bit differently because I want to talk to you about eyes. Um, so when we paint eyes, the first color that we tend to go to is white. Now that's actually not correct. What we want to start off with is something a little more flesh tone because the whites of our eyes are not actually white. And to prove my point, I want you to go to the bathroom look in the mirror and look at the reflections of the light on your eyes. When you see that bright white highlight on your eye, compare it to the actual whites of your eyes, you'll notice that it's a lot brighter and that the color of your eye is closer to your skin tone than it is the white. You can see this in a lot of cartoons and other shows where they highlight the eyes with bright white. A lot of animes have the eye colors more close to the skin tone. Now, let's jump to the palette and let me show you how we're going to paint some eyes. We're back at our palette. Let's paint an eyeball. So you'll see on this side, this is an eye that I've already painted for uh, Gorm from Kingdom Death. And I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of uh, doing a bunch of coats of white on this eye. Um, I think it was about seven in total, so it's still not fully white, but that's okay because we're actually going to tone it back down a little bit. <clears throat> Don't mind the mold lines and things like that. I'm actually, I'm going to go back and fix those. Um, when I'm painting for myself, I usually will paint in stages. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to add a little bit of white to our palette. And then that flesh tone that I held up before. Now this is a... Uh, Reaper Master Series, it is Elf Flesh. And it mixes pretty well. We don't need a whole lot of it. Get the dried paint off my palette. Take some of this and mix it into the white. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start develop in our shadows. Um, get here under the eye and just coat the whole thing because there's not going to be any white left on this eye when we're done. Now if you're painting eyes for tiny models, your normal 28 millimeters um, Space Marines and the like. Your eyes are, you're gonna start with white. You're gonna put it down just like I did on Gormy here. Uh, and that, that white, you can always go back if you want to start practicing this technique. And for a, a simple effect, start adding, um, a little bit of sepia to your sepia wash over the eye when you're done painting it. And that will help give you, give you that illusion that the, the eye isn't just a stark white. Actually give you a little bit of control too. It'll help keep the eye from looking so stark. Ping one of these little hands here. Go back. See, I added mahogany to my palette. I really like the mahogany color. It works pretty well. And this is over here on this side. This is some pretty dark mahogany in the eye because eyes shade. They don't, they're not a light source. <laughs> they're not meant to be super white while you're painting. I'll go ahead and take some of my pure mahogany and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda trace a line around the outside. Let it just do its own thing, almost like a wash and like fall into the crack of the eye here. And I think I'll probably save the irises for another video. We're just going to focus on the whites of the eye. I'm 
And this mahogany gives me my my borderline of the eyeball. And you can already see, like, it's the, the color helps a whole lot. If I just took, you know, if I was going to paint the white of this eye, I'd just take my airbrush and just lay down a nice solid white coat. But, man, that wouldn't give it any sort of character. It would just be a stark, white, lifeless eyeball. It'd look like a doll. Not like a monster. All right, now I want to take a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to grab some uh, medium yellow in the air. Again, I'm doing pretty light coats. I don't want to really create any lines with my layers. I want them to blend pretty well. So again, I'll take a little bit of this flesh, add it back over here to the white, drag some yellow into it. And check my color. And then, yeah, I like that yellow. You can maybe look a little jaundiced. Because, I mean, he does look like a big baby, so. Got some nutrition issues going on. I haven't really decided where my irises are going to be. I'm just kind of doing a general forward a light on the uh, the eye here. And then again, maybe take a little bit of this mahogany, bring it in over here, and sort of start increasing the roundness. Because this is going to help this eye. I mean, it pokes out a good bit, but adding this shading is going to make it really bulge from its socket. When I'm doing these layers, you can see the the paint. You can't really see it on the on the brush, but you can see it when you lay it down. So that that's about how thin you want your paint to be. When you're layering, these are, you know, pseudo glazes for the layers that I'm doing here. Again, adding some water to my my paint. Trying to find a good angle to get in there. There's little lanterns in the way. I created a little bit of a line here with the, the layer, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to deepen this shadow. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and pull down. I'm supposed to give glazes a little bit of time to dry, force dry it a little bit. Just touch on glazes a little bit since we're talking about the subject. <clears throat> glazes are almost like a, a reverse dry brush. Uh, you want a really wet brush and then you want to take something like a paper towel and kind of bleed the paint off and then check it on your hand make sure it's not too strong and then lightly apply it you see how it blends out that little bit of a line that we had before do the same thing for the top I like to tell people to always err on the side of having less paint on their brush. You know, a little bit on the nose here. Take that off. You know, if you keep, if you keep your, your water handy when you wash your brushes, if it's not like super saturated with paint, you can use your brush and take some water and always get paint off before it dries. Especially if it's on something that's already been drying for a few days. This is last week. <clears throat> 
get a little brush, pull the paint off, and blend it over. Whoop! Ugh, drop my brush. Reload. It can be pretty clumsy for a painter. Now it's okay that the paint is kind of wet here in the cracks because that's where it's going to build up. You're not really touching that again so it's not going to crater or anything on us. Craters when you have uh, dry paint around the edge of a uh, wet paint. So I have a circle here and then this is all wet but this around the side is dry when you're painting you pass over it you pull the wet paint out and you end up with a little circle of dry paint all right I mean, i'm pretty happy with the color there might need to be blended a little bit more but that's the charm of the uh, Kingdom Death is you can make them look pretty dirty. Let's take a little bit more of this uh, white in our flesh here. Mad back or yellow. This is going to be pretty thick. This is non glaze. Pull that back through the middle here. Again, doing a little bit of wet blending by licking the brush and this uh, mahogany still a little bit active on the eyeball. I got a little bit of a dark spot here I want to kind of pull out. Be careful not to rush it, let it dry build up the area around it. And then just kind of glaze that little bit of a highlight back in. Now, I might go back and add this to the other side, but what if we had some little veins kind of traveling throughout the eye give it some more character because this is a of course a monster so i want to make it look as monstrous as possible so a little bit of freehand um doing veins and eyes uh, start from your edge where you're going to put your brush down and then just pull up like I said before in some of the other videos, when you're painting, um, always make sure to kind of pull toward you. It gives you a little bit more control. So we're just going to lightly put in the feeling that there's some, some blood vessels running around in here. In the eye. Just real light. You don't have to... Put in big, thick lines. Yeah, giving some nice little veins on the side of the eye here. Let's do the underside. Trying not to poke the camera with the little proboscis that he's got on his head. Him or her. It. <laughs> and then from the interior of the eye, I can make this a little bit redder. I 
These don't have to be solid as long as they can kind of break. Give the illusion of going in deeper under the flesh. Well, those will look pretty good once you get an iris in there. Like I said, I'll paint the iris on, on film next time. This time, let's add some over here. I just have to be careful not to bisect my uh, highlight because if I did that, then it wouldn't look like a highlight anymore. All right. <clears throat> well, I don't want to add the white highlights to this side quite yet. I want to wait until I've added my iris because it usually will put the, the highlight on an intersection. It just gives it that little bit more brightness. But that's an eyeball and it's not white because you don't want it to be white. That's it for this time. And I might turn this, uh, this model into a, a tutorial project, show you guys how I'm doing the the eyes and the makeup because this is supposed to be a geisha gorm so she's getting dressed up for her big debut but that's it for tonight and we'll see you guys next time